Hello, uh, I am Surya Subedi. Uh, I am Professor of International Law and the author of the study guide on International Economic Law. Today I will talk very briefly about the focus or the content of Section C of the course on International Economic Law. Section C is devoted to the examination of the laws and policies relating to the regulation of foreign investment. How multinational corporations make their decisions to invest in other countries, what are the considerations they take into account before deciding to invest and what level of protection they get, what level of protection they are entitled to under international law. That is the focus of this section. If a company wishes to invest capital, know-how, technology or other forms of investment in a country, what assurance the law will provide to them, what certainty and predictability they will have in investing in other countries or in having their investment protected by law. Of course, protection of foreign investment is under national law. Most countries which want to attract foreign investment will have some sort of national regulation themselves, national investment law, laws enacted by parliament or the legislative body of the country. That is the main source of protection of foreign investment by multinational corporations or other foreign investors. But as a supplementary or a complementary mechanism, international law comes in and provides additional protection to foreign investors. More importantly, international law provides for a mechanism for settling disputes between foreign investors and host governments. That is where international investment law has played a very important role in the recent past. Uh, the ICSID, the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes has become busier and busier. In the 70s and 80s, it hardly had any cases in its docket, but today the ICSID is very busy. Just to give you an example, so the course begins by surveying the international efforts to regulate foreign investment, what were the attempts made by the World Bank, by various agencies within the United Nations, what happened in the 70s and 80s when we are talking about the new international economic order, what was the project behind it, what was the idea behind it, how that idea was implemented and what were the failures and successes of the international efforts made in the 1970s and 80s to regulate foreign investment. In the 1990s, there was an attempt for instance by the OECD to come up with a comprehensive treaty designed to regulate foreign investment in the form of a multilateral agreement on investment MAI or some people call it MIA multilateral investment agreement. But then that too was not successful for a number of reasons which I have outlined in my study guide. Then the World Bank came into the picture in the early 2000s, but that too was not very successful. The World Bank, uh, the um, um, WTO after having realized the complexity of the matter decided to abandon the project in 2004, in July 2004. So, today what we have is a collection of bilateral investment treaties and number of other investment related treaties in existence between states. So, international investment law today is governed basically by either bilateral investment treaties or so called free trade agreements or regional uh, investment and trade related treaties. So, I provide a survey of the recent developments within international investment law, the efforts to regulate them, the successes and failures and the notion of corporate social responsibility new ideas have come into existence and the response of international institutions to those new ideas and new proposals to make the world a fairer one for all to live in. We prosper, enable companies to prosper, enable companies to create wealth, to generate employment opportunities, to generate revenue for uh, host countries, so that they can finance a various social welfare related activities. But at the same time to make sure that the activities of foreign investors is not detrimental to the local environment, 
the investment activities, the activities of foreign companies or their subsidiary, subsidiaries does not undermine or does not violate people's rights, human rights around the globe. So, these are the considerations that have had a significant role to play and with that in mind, I have provided an up to date analysis of the recent trends in regulating foreign investment, the notion of corporate responsibility, the notion of a sustainable development, uh, the idea of resolving investment disputes through international arbitration, uh, whether under uh, ICSID, the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes or other mechanisms, but the mechanisms are there to provide a mechanism to settle disputes when things go wrong, when a company or a foreign investor has invested in a country and the state has to enact laws designed to implement its uh, own economic policy. There can be a conflict of interest, then in that case disputes do arise. So, how do you settle those disputes? What is the current mechanism? How these different mechanisms are working? What is the jurisprudence? The focus for us international lawyers is what is the jurisprudence there? In which direction the jurisprudence is going? how these various provisions of both hard law and soft law have been interpreted by international courts and tribunals that is the focus of this section basically to familiarize yourself with the law on the regulation of foreign investment the interpretation of the law by various dispute settlement mechanisms and uh, the response of states and other international organizations to the challenges brought about by globalization in today's world. Thank you.